We're coming to you from Singapore International Energy Week, where the focus isn't just on broader discussions to secure energy supplies for the future, but also on global markets which have been reacting to events in Greece, as well as the collapse of MF Global. For more, I'm joined by Daniel Ahn, he's a senior economist at City, as well as Clyde Russell, who is a columnist at Thomson Reuters. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Daniel, let me start with you. I mean, we're looking at uh, increased volatility. Let, give, us, give us a sense of the state of play in markets right now. Yeah, the, we've seen some uh, rare uh, bit of economic, good economic news last week, uh, some uh, positive economic data from the U.S., uh, an important step forward, or so we thought, uh, from uh, the Eurozone debt negotiations. I, unfortunately, that has clouded again uh, in recent days. Uh, some now negative data points from China, um, uh, the Greek uh, political tensions in Greece. Um, all of this is unfortunately pointing to uh, continued uh, macro-driven uh, financial volatility in markets. Client, do you see the Greeks voting in any particular way? Well, I think the opinion polls clearly point to the fact that the Greek population doesn't like this deal that's being put on them by, by the European Union. If that does get you know, come out of the referendum and it's rejected. I think the question then that everybody should will be asking is what happens then? Does a the Greek government fall? Does Greece have a messy default and exit from the euro? All this uncertainty is going to build into the pricing in the markets. And once again, we're going to be on the so-called European merry-go-round as everybody waits for some sort of clarity and resolution. Daniel, we've had a number of uh, uh, players here at the meeting is coming up with desired price ranges, 80 to 100, 70 to 80. Uh, taking into mind what Clyde has just said, how, how is this going to affect prices in commodity markets, in particular oil markets? Yeah, it's always uh, a challenge uh, to try and uh, fine-tune markets to, uh, to meet um, a fairly narrow uh, price target range, um, uh, given the fact that we have lumpy uh, supply uh, decision uh, making, as well as a moving target in terms of uh, where markets think global demand is going to be. Um, but nevertheless, um, the remarks by uh, the signaling by the GCC uh, that they would not be supportive of any kind of uh, production quota agreement as long as Iran remained uh, in presidency of the IA uh, is, is pointing to the fact that there is going to be a price ceiling on commodity on oil prices, and uh, it's going to be, therefore be difficult to imagine that prices will reach um, the same kind of lofty levels we saw in 2008. And do you see a severe impact from uh, what's happening with MF Holdings at all? MF Global, rather. Uh, it's challenging to say. Um, uh, MF Global, uh, Global naturally uh, is a casualty of um, the ongoing uh, political turmoil uh, in uh, the European debt negotiations. Um, uh, that said, uh, I think uh, regulators are, even as we speak, uh, poring over uh, the degree to which um, uh, MF Global uh, was leveraged up uh, and uh, therefore uh, how much systemic uh, risk uh, can enter into markets um, uh, given, uh, given their failure. Daniel, I just want to pick up on the fact that you, you also sit in the Council of Foreign Relations and one area which you've been looking very closely at is the issue of regulation uh, for commodity-based uh, instruments. But where are we right now? At one time, this was really high on top of the agenda. It's, it's sort of disappeared. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's completely disappeared. Uh, the CFTC has recently made some steps in terms of uh, uh, tightening uh, margin and capital requirements, uh, introducing position limits. Uh, so it's still lurking in the background. In fact, um, uh, President Sarkozy and uh, former Prime Minister Gordon Brown uh, had uh, uh, point, uh, pointed to commodity financial regulation as being uh, one of the key points on the agenda uh, for the G20 meeting at Ghan. Um, that said, it seems now that uh, more uh, immediate issues um, uh, are competing for the attention of policymakers, and we'll see how much progress they make. Clyde, your, your thoughts on regulation, a good thing, a bad thing? I think it depends what you're trying to achieve. I think if the regulators want to eliminate volatility from the markets, then you know they might be going about it the wrong way. Or it's very difficult to eliminate that volatility, especially since we don't have great information on what's actually happening in the underlying physical supply and demand. I think if they're trying to uh, eliminate or reduce systemic risk from collapses like we saw with Lehman Brothers in 2008, then they might be getting closer to uh, achieving that. Daniel, closely linked to this uh, idea of regulation uh, is also transparency. I mean, can you take us through where your thoughts in, as far as, as, as being transparent is concerned? 
It's an uphill battle, unfortunately, uh, because oil is w one of those quintessential globalized commodities. And uh, minute differences in sulfur content and gravity aside, uh, it doesn't really matter where um, the barrel of oil comes from. It can come from Texas or it can come from the Middle East. Um, and you sort of need to track all of that uh, to get a comprehensive picture of the demand supply balance. Um, that said, there uh, have been some exciting new initiatives. In particular, I'll highlight the Joint Oil Data Initiative, or JODI, uh, which is being sponsored by a consortium of international organizations, uh, including significantly OPEC. Um, that said, uh, given the fact that it is a globalized market, um, uh, providing good transparency and comprehensive transparency uh, to all the kind of dark areas of the world, uh, notably in the emerging markets as well as on the supply and the demand side as well as on the supply side. Um, uh, it is therefore inherently a foreign policy problem uh, and uh, perhaps in an unhappy parallel uh, to the ongoing uh, Greek, uh, Greek crisis, um, uh, there is still a lot of uh, room for improvement in terms of international coordination uh, on these global questions. Okay, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it that. Daniel, thank you very much uh, for being with us today, and, and Clyde, as always, good to have you with us uh, on this forum today. And that is uh, our wrap of uh, day three at the uh, Singapore International Energy Week. I'm Adil Gay for Reuters.